Hello everybody, good day to you, Anand here again. We are going to take up a wonderful topic of mathematics that is calculus. Now it's a huge field and it has got immense amount of possibility and the importance of calculus lies in the fact that it can be applied in solving huge number of problems including metaphysical problems which relate to even how the universe was born, how the planets were formed that is the level of application of calculus and of course it can be used in the designing of machines it can be used even in the field of commerce to calculate various things like cost of products how much should be the demand of a particular product or of a particular good and hence it's an extremely huge field that's what calculus is all about now hence let's straight away take a dip into the huge field of calculus and understand the dynamics of it. So, what is basically calculus? We know about arithmetic. It's a field of mathematics. So, when we talk about arithmetic, arithmetic is something which all of us have been familiar right since our childhood. The first thing that you start is a basic number system that is natural numbers. So, we know that 2 plus 3 raised to 5 or 2 plus 3 raised to 5 is 5 raised to 5 or you have 2 plus 1 raised to 5 is 3 raised to 5 hence we calculate or you have also 1 plus 2 the whole square this can be nothing but 3 square we know is 9 so which can also be written as 1 square plus 2 into 1 into 2 plus 2 square. If you calculate this way, even then it turns out to be 9. So arithmetic basically is the study of these kind of numbers whose values are fixed. Hence we call them as constants. And basically then we move to algebra. We apply this to the concept of algebra. Suppose you replace 2 and 3 with a, say for example, you get a plus b raised to 5. If you replace 1 and 2 with x and y, you get x plus y, the whole raised to 2. And then you have the formula x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Right. So what we are doing, we move one step ahead. What we said was true for specific numbers. Now we include variables like x, y. So what is true for one number is also true for any kind of a number. And hence, x and y are called variables because the values could vary from situation to situation. Hence, we derive standard formulae. So, basically, algebra is just an extension of arithmetic which involves dealing with constants as well as variables and evolving certain formulae and how to apply those various types of formulae in solving equations, various types of equations. So, both arithmetic and algebra are basic levels of studies of mathematics. Then you have geometry. Geometry basically studies shapes. Like suppose you have an isosceles triangle here. How do you find the area of this isosceles triangle? Yes, yeah, so we construct a perpendicular. Then we use half into base into height. Or you have a circle. How do you find the area of the circle? Which is going to be pi r square. Various properties. Yes, similarly you may have a trapezium. How do you find the area of this trapezium or what are the various properties of this trapezium? If these two sides are congruent, what do you know about these angles? These are the various properties you study in geometry. And then you have trigonometry. Trigonometry we all know is basically study of ratio between various sides in a right triangle. So you have a right angle triangle. So you have this as the hypotenuse, yes, either of them could be taken as a base or the height depending upon which angle. So we have the six basic ratios sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, right, cosec theta, secant theta, cotangent theta. And using these particular ratios, how do you find the relationship between the various sides of this? So that is trigonometry, and it has got wide applications in the field of architecture, in the field of civil engineering measurement of heights of uh, various uh, tall structures like buildings and even designing of bridges, the angle at which the gradient and all those things can be done with the help of trigonometry. 
So calculus on the contrary is a very huge field. It's basically dealing with change in one quantity with respect to change in another quantity. Yes. Now to understand, calculus is a very interesting kind of a concept. <clears throat> so, the father of calculus was Leibniz, yes, Gottfried Leibniz and of course even Newton did a lot of work on calculus. Leibniz introduced the concept of used calculus to find out the concept of gradient of a particular curve. Right. So basically, if you see, suppose you have a particular curve over here like this and this is the x y axis, this is the x axis and I want to find the gradient of this curve. So here, if you see, I take a point here, I take a point over here and I draw this particular thing. This particular line joining these two points here, there is x2, y2 and here there is x1, y1. So, the slope of this particular line is nothing but the gradient of this line. Now, that means change in the value of y upon change in the value of x which is also called slope of the line. But this will be the slope of this line. What will be the gradient of this? Suppose you bring this point closer and closer and closer and closer to this point. That means the change in y is kept minimum and the change in x also is so minimum that the change in x is almost moving, delta x almost move towards 0. Limit as delta x as it approaches 0. If you do it, these two points come close to each other and it joins over here. Now this, hence at this particular point, of this line can be extended to get something like this. Hence, the gradient of this particular curve at this particular point is nothing but this particular tangent. So, this slope of this tangent is what is called as the gradient of this curve. And this is what Leibniz did. And this he called this as derivative. He called this the concept of derivative and the process is called differentiation. So, during the process of differentiation, what Leibniz did was he found the concept of how to find the gradient of a curve or which also means how to find the slope of the tangent to the curve. And then from this, the various types of fields and the various applications uh, took place and it was a huge explosion. On the contrary, Newton used the concept of calculus to explain various forms of motion. Say for example, even the case of speed, we have the concept of speed. We know that speed is nothing but distance upon time, right? And often we calculate average speed. Suppose you're traveling from place A to place B, which is around 120 kilometer per hour, 120 kilometers. And you take about two hours to complete. So if you ask somebody, what is the general speed? So they say 120 upon 260 kilometer per hour. So you ask, oh, is that so? So did your speedometer constantly keep, kept showing 60 km per hour? So you wonder and say, no, it wasn't. On an average, it was 60 km per hour. So then you say, okay, come on, break it up into tinier intervals of 5 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 minutes. So in each of these 5 minutes, was the speed the same or was it constantly changing? So obviously, you might have managed to keep the average speed for 5 minutes also the same. Further, if you divide it into smallest possible intervals, then what was the speed? Now this way, he explained the concept of differentiation. So when you make it the tiniest possible time interval, in that tiniest possible interval, how much was the speed? That process is what is called as derivatives or differentiation. So Speed itself is nothing but the distance traveled that is delta x in the smallest possible time interval. 
so you break the entire journey into tiny 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 infinitesimally small time intervals in each of those time intervals what is the distance traveled obviously the distance may not be possibly the same unless the body is at rest so it then okay it travels a distance of 0 meter so you could say it is traveling with uniform speed but then when you break it up into tiny tiny intervals and in each of those tiny intervals the distance traveled may be equal may not be equal but this particular concept of breaking the entire journey into tiny intervals of time and the distance traveled in each of those tiny intervals would be what is called as p and from here evolved also the concept of differentiation so simultaneously leibniz and newton both of them worked on the concept of calculus. This was the, how the genesis of calculus take place. So Leibniz worked on the concept of how to apply derivatives in curves and to find the slope of a tangent. And hence it is said that derivative of any function of a curve, the curve is expressed in terms of a function or a formula, just the slope of that particular curve or the tangent gradient of the curve or the slope of the tangent to the curve is the derivative or differentiation of that particular function of that particular uh, function of that particular curve or the formula of that curve whereas Newton did more in terms of speed and this itself was called again derivative. So like that speed, acceleration, momentum, force, various types of equations of circles or implicit functions, explicit functions all of these could be expressed and they could be differentiated or you could find their derivatives. So this was one particular how the birth of derivatives took place. Okay. Furthermore, <coughs> now what is calculus? We did that. Basically, calculus once again I say is the concept of study of change in one quantity with respect to change in another quantity right related quantity obviously it's simply as simple as this so suppose there is a function y square is equal to 4x yes so when x changes how does y also change so like how slope we have, there is a change in the y coordinate with respect to change in x coordinate. So slope is also a kind of a derivative, right? So this is what is calculus about. So, and then there are various branches of calculus. There is differential, differentiation. There is a process of obtaining the derivatives. There is integration, which is almost the inverse of differentiation. In short, if you take a particular function f of x and you differentiate it and you get f dash x, that is the f of x on differentiated if it gives f dash x, then f dash x if it is made to undergo differentiation, it gives f of x plus some constant. Right? Now, integration is one field, then there are limits, we have done, already we have done limits and continuity of a function, then there are infinite series, yes, then definite integration, etc. Now, what is definite integ integration? Just since we are talking about calculus, I would just introduce differentiation is about breaking one entire figure and into tiny things. So if you take a particular figure like this, you break it into tiny, 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 tiny things. So in each of those, you want to find the area of this particular figure. In each of those tiny space, calculate each of the areas. That is differentiation. Integration, as they say, to integrate things. So if you want to find the area of this irregular figure, there is no specific formula. If it's a circle, we know there is a formula. If it's a square, we know there is a formula. If it's a rectangle, we know there is a formula. If there is a trapezium, there is a formula. But if you have this, then what do you do? You break it up into tiny squares, tiny squares, tiny squares, tiny squares. Then you find the area of all these tiny possible squares. You add up that. 
but still this portion is still left uncovered. So you break it up to till still tinier squares, rectangles, triangles. So you then break this up into the tiniest possible spaces, find the area of each of these, that alone is differentiation. And when you add up all those areas, you get the area of the whole thing. That is a process of integration, which is a further application of integration is what is called as definite integrals. So these are the various branches of calculus.